In the last video, you saw us create a project and get it set up for a Office 365 connector. Now we're gonna register our connector and test it. So let's go over to the browser and let's go register our connector. So I'm gonna to go to aka.ms slash connectors dashboard. And I'm already signed in, so I'm gonna collect select new connector. So a couple things, the connector name, a few things we have to specify here. Um, a lot of these things don't, a lot of the values here don't really matter, like the descriptions and the company website, um, but some of them do. So in this case here, for the connector, I'm gonna say my first uh, connector, we'll call it my first Teams connector. Uh, the description, I'll just put anything in here, description, description. Um, the website is HTTPS, and I'll put it as our ngrok URL. The configuration page is also HTTPS, like this. And then I also am gonna grab that URL from the list of all the files that are being displayed uh, and being served up from my uh, project. So I'll do that, paste that value in. And the last one is uh, the list of domains. So the valid domains, I have to specify all the domains that are allowed um, uh, that this connector uh, is as, as a valid domain. Um, one thing about this uh, is that uh, you know you may think that when I said a second ago we needed to get the connector ID, but to get that we had to have that URL running for the company website. So why don't I just create the connector, give it a uh, temporary uh, URL for the subdomain, um, save our changes, get the ID, and then create the project? Well, the reason I did it this way is because whenever you make changes to a connector, it can take uh, some time for those changes to take effect. And during development and testing, that can be quite challenging and a little frustrating to have to wait for things to take effect and not know if they've actually taken effect yet. So it can, it can make troubleshooting uh, a bit problematic. Um, what I would recommend is that if you're going to, if you go that direction, delete the connector and recreate a new one. Um, but then again, your ID is gonna change and you're gonna have to go back and run into the exact same problem that we're gonna run into in just a minute. So. I would do it the way that I'm recommending you to do it uh, and showing you how to do it here, where you create the project, spin it up, and um, now and uh, to obtain the dynamic URL from Ngrok, and then come register your uh, connector. So I'll go ahead and click Save to register our connector. And while it gives us this manifest here um, that we could download, I don't want this. I want to I want to use the one that we already have. So I'm going to grab this ID for our connector, and I'm going to come back over to our project. And if I go into the environment uh, variable settings file, this .env, I can go ahead and update that connector ID. Now, that's gonna be helpful in the future, but the challenge that I have with this is that that didn't trigger the recreation of my uh, Microsoft Teams app package. So that is, you can see that right here in this package folder. So there's the package that was actually generated. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna unzip our, the, the file um, that are for our app package, and I'm gonna grab the manifest, look at the manifest that was generated, and I'm gonna update this ID right here because I wanna use all these same URLs. So I'm gonna go grab the ID for our connector that we have, copy it, come back to our manifest, and I'll paste it in right here. Save my changes, and then I'm gonna build a brand new app package. And we'll use the exact same name as the one that we had earlier. And I'll just overwrite the one that was generated. So at this point, everything is now set up. Let's go test the connector. So I'm going to come back over to Microsoft Teams. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new channel for us to test our connector in. Now I first need to go install uh, our connector. So what I'm going to do is go Manage Team. I'm going to go to Apps. I'm going to upload a custom app, find the app that we just that I just updated. Here it is. And I'm going to go ahead and install it. Now that I've installed my connector, let's come over to our connector test and I'm going to go to my list of connectors and I'm going to find my connector. So our connector has been side loaded, so I'm going to just do a search for side and I should find the connector uh, in the side loaded category because that's not listed over here as one of my options. So I'll say configure. And now we're seeing the configuration page for our connector. 
So here, I'll just select orange as a color and then set, select save. All right, so that now my connector has, has been uh, registered. You can see that listed right here. Now we can test it. So I'm gonna use the tool Postman to do this. I'm gonna use this to submit a HTTP post to our connector. So if you recall, let's go grab our URL. So it's at this endpoint. Make sure we leave, up, leave Teams up so we can still see it. It's at HTTPS and then that URL for me right now. Uh, yours will be different when you spin it up. Um, the ping endpoint is at, under, at slash API slash connector slash ping. Um, the header, I'm going to set a header value here to the content type of data that we're going to send it is application slash JSON. And then in the body, I'm going to select raw and paste in some JSON. This JSON is simply going to be sending a message card uh, to our um, to our to the connector itself to the connector's endpoint uh, and web service. Um, now, in a real connector, uh, you notice here that I've got some uh, temporary URLs that I've listed here uh, for an image, um, and then I'm also have another one here for an image. I'm not in a real world. You should probably go in and update these URLs, but for our test, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to skip that, and we're going to go ahead and just submit our request. So I'm going to send that request. Now we should see in just a minute over here in Teams, we should see, and sure enough we do, our connector has uh, received the request and it submitted that request to Microsoft Teams. Um, and you can see that because we have the exact card that we submitted to it. So in this demo, you saw how to create an Office 365 connector and add it to Microsoft Teams. Thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something. Now remember that this video is part of a series of videos on this Microsoft Learning module. This video is also part of a playlist that includes all the videos that are associated with this module so that you can watch them in order. The playlist and all its included videos are associated with a Microsoft Learning module that includes hands-on lab exercises and additional resources. Check the notes for this video and the associated playlist for more information and where to find the Microsoft Learning module.